All right, um, hello and welcome to Digital Photography's I3 lecture series. Um, as Katrine mentioned, it's our last lecture in the spring, and we are so lucky to have Pixie Liao uh, to help us close out the series. Um, she's originally from Shanghai, China, and she is currently based in Brooklyn, New York. She holds an MFA in photography from the University of Memphis. Recent awards include New York Foundation for the Arts Fellowship, and Focal New Works Award and Lens Culture Exposure Award. Uh, Pixie has been an artist in residence in Lightwork, the Lower Manhattan Cultural Council, Center for Photography at Woodstock, and the Camera Club of New York. Exhibitions include Arario Gallery, Flowers Gallery, Kunstlich Gallery, Xiangning, I hope that pronunciation is okay, Xiangning Art Museum, VT Art Salon, Kipps Gallery, the Running Horse Contemporary Art Space, and Northern Lit Photo Festival. A word to our students, uh, Pixie is a rising star in photography, and there's a thing or two that we can all learn uh, from how she's built such a brilliant career so quickly. So please help me welcome Pixie Liao to our lecture series. <laughs> um, hello, everyone. Um, thank you so much for coming. Um, I may already introduce. My name is Pixie. Um, I'm originally from Shanghai, China, and I currently live in Brooklyn. Um, first, I want to thank you um, to the SVA, MPS, Digital Photography, and also Jaime for inviting me here, because it's a great honor to me personally. Um, I remember 10 years ago when I was um, looking for school um, in the US, um, SVA was one of my favorite, but at that time uh, it was after 9-11, so I decided to go to school in the middle of the U.S. Um, so uh, I went to Memphis, um, basically because of this guy. Not because I'm a great fan of Elvis, but because at that time I, I, was, uh, I didn't know much about U.S., so Elvis about like very few things I know about U.S. and I always like music and like musicians. I think if I go to his city, maybe I can meet some musicians. So I decided to go to University of Memphis for my um, grad school. Um, when I just got to Memphis, uh, it was quite a culture shock for me because um, the landscape is so different. I grew up in Shanghai and it's like a, a city of concrete um, buildings. There's no plants in, and there's no open view, like big skies like that. So I was, in the first, I was just exploring Memphis, um, see what interests me. Um, I think it was more like my first impression of the United States. And, you know, the people are different, language is different, um, the culture and the, even the religion is different. So I was just, just experiencing. I, I didn't know what to shoot. I just, uh, just shoot whatever interests me. And then um, also um, it was my first time in life that I actually got to learn something that I'm in interested in. When I was in China, um, I was never allowed to study art because it was not considered a promising career. <laughs> so um, I had a, such a great chance to study art, and I just learned as much as I can. And I was also interested in film, so I was taking a lot of film classes. Um, as a result, I was um, looking at Memphis, and it was such a great location for photographers, because there's many films which uh, was taken in Memphis, because it's a great backdrop. <coughs> so I went to these places, and I see locations that are interesting and I, I think you know it almost feel like it can be like a film set so I find people that I know and I ask them to act for me and I'm going to take picture for that so this this is actually was my thesis project it's called Steals from Unseen Films and this one is taken in Shanghai um, there was also there was a, a building in Shanghai, and during the Cultural Revolution, um, many people actually committed suicide in Shanghai from this building because it's kind of high building at the time. 
and it has a nickname called Shanghai, Di uh, Shanghai Diving Platform. So I just sneak into the building with some of my friends and then took some picture. And I really like doing this project. I mean, I like, I like the moment when I'm taking the photos and I like seeing the photos. But one thing about these photos, I feel like when I look at them, I don't see much of me in it. I, I feel like I want to take some photo that more, something that can belongs to me, like only me. And um, I met one person, very special person in Memphis. That was the luckiest thing happened to me. Um, I met my boyfriend. Um, he later became my muse. And um, he is Japanese, and he's, he's five years younger than me. And um, I first met him on the first day of school. It was an international student orientation. And we didn't talk to each other. But at that day, I had, very, I had a very strange thought. I was thinking, what would it be like if, uh, to be his girlfriend? <laughs> I never had that kind of thought before, but it, I just had that thought. And uh, after one year, you know, I met him again, and I, I used the <laughs> excuse. That I say, would you like to model for him? But actually, I just want to get to know him. And then he, he agreed. And then I start to um, photographing him and getting close to him. And so this is very good um, suggestions. If you <laughs> like somebody for, uh, you know, photographers, this is the best, best uh, <laughs> excuse. Usually the other way around. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. Uh, maybe. <laughs> uh, um. So I was photographing him because he. We start dating, and it's so easy to ask him to model for me. Um, I was just doing whatever photo assignment for the classes. So I was doing this random photos. It was for, I think, large format um, class. So I was showing these photos to my class classmates and my teacher. And their first um, comment is, how could you treat your boyfriend like that? <laughs> and I was very surprised at the, at the moment, because before that, I never thought there's anything wrong or different about us. Um, so. I keep doing these photo assignments. And then um, this photo come up. And then I did this one too. And then I, I was telling my best friend who is um, in Shanghai, and he's a director. And I was telling him, I have this very young and lovely boyfriend. And he, he said, mm, how can you choose a boyfriend the way we choose girlfriends? Because he think it's a privilege to um, choose your spouse who is young and lovely. So it's man's privilege. So I was thinking, why not? This is what I was doing. And I enjoyed that. Um, so I start to, the idea just comes. And I start to really enjoy doing these photos between us. It's more like a very intimate game for us. So we had a lot of fun doing that. So I think it's a lot of fun, at least for me. Uh, so when I start to photograph, uh, photograph us, um, many ideas comes actually from the things I've seen in the society um, that, I, that we live in, um, things I, about men and women in relationship. And uh, that caught my attention. And, Sometimes they are very interesting to me, and I like them. And sometimes I say I want to do something different, but kind of in the same way. So a lot of photos are actually inspired by things I've seen. Like this one is uh, inspired by Jenny Jackson's famous album cover I saw when I was a teenager. And um, uh, and I think I. From the very beginning, I just always have the cable release um, in my photograph.
because, and I never wanted to change that because I think it's a proof that these photos were taken in a very private settings and there's only um, us and the camera and nobody else. And like this one, I think it's, it's inspired by a very, um, a film shot from the film called Blue Velvet when the, the woman was trying to stab the man. But I think somehow he really enjoys it. So I was trying to use it, use the cable release to mimicking that scene. And usually when I was doing photo shoot, I have one idea. And then since I'm shooting already, so I'm, I will use the same setting to do little um, alternative things, you know, like options. So I have, sometimes I'll have like totally different photos from the same setting. And um, this was the last image I had before I graduate. Um, and Mauro, he, he was an undergrad at the time and he graduated half a year before me. I was doing my grad school. He, he, he moved to New York first. So for half a year, we're not together. And my project kind of just stopped here. And then half a year later, I graduated and I, I moved to New York with him. And this is um, our first apartment in Bushwick. It was a, a basement apartment. Um, the apartment is kind of railway style. And I don't really like it, except for the kitchen has a lot of light with, and it's kind of <coughs> big. So I use the kitchen a lot for my photographs. And uh, well, this is our kitchen, it's very bright. Um, and this photo, um, I think it's a very interesting photo for me, uh, also for him, not interesting. And he, this is actually his least favorite photograph, but his reason is he had a very bad hair day. Uh, and I think I, I I think I've been doubting his excuse for a long time about this, but recently I read um, I read an article by Sally Man on New York Times, and he she was talking about um, her son, and he usually asked him permission before showing the photos. So one of the photos the son didn't want to show is because he was kind of naked, but he had some like socks kind of thing on his arms or something. And his reason was um, it make him look dorky. Um, so I think, now I think back, I think he does think his hair looks really bad. And I agree with that. And um, in 2010, I, have, uh, I had a residency in Center for Photography in Woodstock. And that was a very important um, career, career stages for me because I graduated and I didn't have enough photo of this project and I really like it. And I know this is something I want, I just don't have enough photos to, you know, submit to shows and things. So this is first residence only for one month in Woodstock, but during that time I actually, it's very productive. And I got a lot of done, so I have a lot more new photos through this residency. And um, there is a, it was also like in the first time that there's a lot of nature, because we live in a country house next to the mountain. So I photographed a lot of um, nature setting photos for me. And this was actually inspired by um, a photograph that I've seen about, um, a very famous actor and he's holding a naked woman and the woman her back is facing the audience and his hands is on her butt. I really love that photograph so I, I, I want to do a version for myself so I took this one. And this one is called Mind Control is a woman's essential skills. I think this this was inspired by some film I see. It's the one weird thing that 
somebody's hands accidentally put on somebody's head, and I was thinking, mm, I should use that. And then I did a, this photo during the um, shooting because um, this 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 photo is actually very special for me because usually when I photograph, I ask him to perform, so he's performing to me. But somehow when I touch my thumbs on his lips, he gives he gave me some like reaction, and the way he look at look, like the the way he look at me is really like in our daily life, you know, it's so real, so I had to take the picture. So this is one of very few photos that I, I think are more real, more real than the other photos. And um, this is our second apartment in Brooklyn. Um, and I think one advantage of photographing um, your partner is that if you, you, you're both at home and if the lighting is good and if your mood is good and you spontaneously want to do some photographing, it's very accessible. And actually, I just found out this photo recently. I didn't like it at the time um, because I look kind of fat in the photo. <laughs> but I think a lot of photos, I actually didn't recognize it until one year or years later Then I recognized it. And I think this one should be in the project. And also, um, I think my project usually is very light because I think that's my attitude towards relationship. From my experience, I feel like you need to keep your relationship really light and happy to be able to stay together. But sometimes I think it's also not true all the time and there's always dark moments. I think um, this is one of the photos that's talking about those kind of dark side of the relationship. Um, this sushi photo, uh, I got the idea from an online joke I heard, and there's a woman who went, before she went to work, she saw her husband lying on the bed, still asleep, and she, she was thinking, he looks so cute, you know, he, he's still asleep. So she tied him up with the blanket and with the belt on the outside. And when she came back to work, and her husband is still lying on the bed, pissed off, and his face is all red and still tied up on the bed. Mm -hmm. And I really like the joke. I feel like this woman's doing something like I, I would like to do. So, you know, um, doing this project gives me a, an excuse to actually do the things that I would like to do but would not hurt our relationship because this is for the photograph. Um, and um, this photo, I think, is uh, about we took it in China in a very, like a, a new hotel, nowhere in the like, countryside. I think for me, it doesn't matter where we are, but it's more about if we are both there. Um, so I think, you know, whenever he is and I'm with him, then I can make a photo. And then we moved to our third apartment, and this apartment is close to Coney Island, so sometimes I would, I would just photo, you cannot tell it's Coney Island, but you know, I, I went there just to do, you know, try to have different background for my photograph. And this photo is also um, because the composition is much tighter, um, because I was kind of tired of my full body shot composition, because I, I feel like all, Photoshop, uh, all photos of mine was all like put back and you know two people in the photo. I want to do something different, so I zoomed in a lot. Um, and when I was doing my project, my biggest this um, difficulty 
is I cannot see the picture when I was taking the picture because I have to always have to predict. You know, I have to ask him to stay in the place first so I kind of guessed where it's going to be and I take the photos. And I was doing the film so I, I won't be able to see what I took. So when I got this uh, film back and I was really uh, disappointed because originally I would imagine us to be much higher but um, because his weight is too much for me to carry so I kind of get much lower than I expected but then I thought about it I think this is actually true you know this is just what happens because the weight and that's what the photo is about it's, it's about the weight that I'm carrying Uh, my hairdresser really liked this photo. Um, and I, um, I, I borrowed my hairdresser's home to take a photo because I like his chair. I think this is um, a, a new photo. I haven't named it. Usually the titles come much later. Um, to me after photography, so I haven't decided what to name this type, um, photo yet. Okay, this is the last photo of this project so far. I, I, I plan to keep shooting for this project as, as long as we are together. So I hope I can do it for many, many, many years. Um, next I'm going to show you is my new project. It's called For Your Eyes Only. Uh, this project is because I feel like I did my relationship project and I think it's, it's really great. It, I feel like the project is totally mine. But at the same time I feel the response to the project is very, um, very different depending on what type of person the audience is whether they accept the idea of this kind of relationship or not. What, if they like it, they like it. If they don't like this relationship, they will hate my photo no, no matter what a photograph is. So I want to do something more vague. Um, it's more about composition and color. And, um, and also the idea of like closed up composition. And this photo is called The Butte. It's also... Um, we have a band together, me and my boyfriend, so this is like our first album, the Build Albums album cover. And um, this one, um, just, you know, I bought some pants for him just for photographing. I think I, um, even though it's named the Poke, I think um, I, I usually call it swan because I kind of feel like it's like a swan. And uh, I think the project is really not about who the person is in the photograph, but it's about um, the kind of attitude that I have, the kind of special attitude that I have that I want to bring to the photographs. And also, um, I think it's uh, also a project about daily performance. Um, like my last projects kind of have very performative act to it. And uh, one of the taboo of photographing Morrow is um, he won't allow me to shoot his genitals. And um, so somehow I got to photograph this photo. And I think I really enjoy, I mean, I like the photo, but the more I 
enjoy about this photo is actually people's response to this photograph, especially in the U.S. because um, in Asia, circumcised is it what's called? It's it's not popular at all in Asia. So usually, that's how it look like. But because in the U.S., most men are circumcised, so they won't even recognize what it is, and they have to stare really close to that part and just trying to figure out what that is, you know. And then with some, I guess some like really weird response, and then finally they figure, oh my god, <laughs> and I like that. And um, this is another one that I made. Uh, there was actually a byproduct that I made. I did a, like a three D sculpture, so I somehow ha had a cast um, for the part um, for my three D project. And after that, the, uh, the cast is not useful anymore. I'm, I'm supposed to throw it away because it's not part of the work. But I kind of feel like so precious. It's ex like exact copy of it. So I, I have to keep it so I spread it in gold. I feel like it's a trophy. And I put it in the box. Okay, I'm gonna end my slideshow here. This is the last photo. Um, so, um, when Jaime emailed me about this talk, I was wondering what I should talk, and he said it would be really great if I give some suggestions to the young photographers. Um, so I have some tips for you guys. Um, uh, first, I, th I think it's really important to find your own not style, but find your own photos. You have to. You have to have to be yourself and trust yourself, even if you think you're different or who you are might not be accepted. You have to just trust it, you know, and don't follow other things. Because sometimes I do the same mistake. I I pick a photo because I think it would look like a good photo because I I've seen it somewhere, but. Then when I look at the photo, I mean, it could be a good photo, but it's not me. You know, it, it can be taken by someone else, and somebody else can take a better photo than this if they are really good. So I think it's really important to be yourself. And then you have to have a goal. Of course, you have to be um, goals driven. Um, for me, I have actually two goals. Um, one is, you know, I really want to be a fine art photographer so I can keep doing the things that I love. Um, the other thing is kind of like, uh, do you have the egg first or do you have the hands first? Um, in order to be the photographer I want to be, I want to stay in the U.S. to develop my career and in order to stay here I have to get an artist visa. So for the artist visa I get a lot of requirement, you have to have a lot of exposures so because of that goal, that kind of pushed me to try to show my work more, and I think it really helped my career. And uh, you should have people you can look up to. You should have a role model. Um, talking about role model, it can be somebody who is um, about your age, um, about your level, but you think they're doing a really good job in some way. Or it can be somebody little better than you, higher level than you, and they can see what's the, what's your next step is gonna be. Or it can be somebody is really great out there, and it's going it can be your ultimate goal. I think you know if you have people you can look up to, you kind of have your direction set. Um, and then when you have these kind of people, read their resume, see what they have done, so you kind of learn from their careers. And um, I did a lot of um, contest competition for um, exhibitions and awards, but there are so many out there right now. I think a lot of them is really just for making money. So when you apply, you have to make sure um, 
the thing is really fits for you. You have to look, see, see if the venue fits your work. Um, see if the judge will like your work or not. You know, a lot of um, competition, if I see the style or the past winners, you know, I was saying, oh, I would never get that. I'm just not wasting my time there. Um, and then, um, very good suggestion is um, I got from my um, education in Memphis is um, my teacher told me you have to always support your fellow artists and I think it's very true um, because um, we are all very young so if you're doing something you want other people to support you but in return you have to also be supportive of other artists because it's really important how the the whole art community grows. And also, you have to support the organization that support me, because I think my career so far has um, got a lot of help from all these kind of different organizations that give me award or give me residencies, and they really promote my work a lot. So I think you have to, in return, to support them so they can support other artists too then it can be really small things like even like like their post on Facebook so they get more exposure or you can share it or you can go to their events or you can donate, donate your work to them or you can if you have a little money you can donate to them you know to support them and then I have some very practical resources for you and these are websites are I think it's good for you to find um, artist opportunities. Uh, first one, SPE, uh, I don't know if you know about it, it's a Society for Photography Education. And this is really good for student photographers. If you want to go out, they have a lot of opportunity that fits for students, student photographers. And the second one, um, Mary Virginia Swanson, she's a consultant, very famous consultant for photographers. And her website always have very good um, resources of um, maybe um, you know shows or opportunities or sometimes there will be some events that you should go to. Um, and for general artists, um, I think NIFA is really great because I think most people will, if they have any events, they will post on NIFA. So it's more general, can cover a lot of things. And also, Retitle, I find, is very good, I, even though I don't know what a website is about. But I think um, they have a very good resource. And the next two are for residencies. If you're looking for residency all over the world, these two websites, I think, covers most of it. OK, so that's my talk. I hope you enjoyed it. And thank you. Q&A. I'll pass around the mic. It's not going to make your voice louder, but it's for the video. So if you have any questions, uh, I'm sure Pixie will be happy to answer them. No questions, also OK. <laughs> Pixie, thank you so much for your talk. I really enjoyed seeing your pictures. Um, <laughs> the question I'm having is, if you look back on your career, what do you think was sort of the turning point, or what was the tricking point that really launched your fine art career? I mean, if you look back, you know, wh what do you think was the decisive moment? Was it a show? Was it an exhibition? Was it a contest that you won? Is there You're you talking about from career point of view, what is the turning point? I think there are several. Um, the CPW residency, my first artist residency, um, is important because they helped me to get a lot of work done. So I have enough material to keep going. And then, what else? I think another important uh, turning point is the LMCC residency, which is nine months. And at the time, um, I, was, I went back to China for vacation. And I came back. I, at the time, I had a part-time job. So I was working in a framing store. Uh, and uh, somehow, even though I was doing part-time for two, three days a week, I just don't have any energy to make photographs. So when I get back from my vacation, and I was told I was fired, 
And I was thinking, um, I have this nine months residency. Maybe I can just, you know, spend my nine months and uh, keep working on my career. I think that is a really big um, career change point for me. So I focus my like all energy in art making for nine months, and I think from there my career really start picking up. Mm, and also, I think. The Lens Culture Exposure Awards is um, it's really a great exposure for photographers. Because before that, I don't think people have seen my work outside of the US a lot, but that one actually brings my work to Europe. So I think these are the three main career changing points for me. Thanks. Um, Pixie, I just have a couple of uh, technical questions that I'm curious about. Um, you said, I think that you, you, at least in the beginning, you worked with film, um, analog, <coughs> with film rather than digital. Is that true? Mm -hmm. And do you still work with on film? Or? No, I, still, I still work with film. I still work with film. Um, yeah, I think um, somehow, I still cannot accept digital photos for myself. So you still don't know what you have but until you get the But my process is more half digital, half analog. I scan my negatives now, and then I kind of Photoshop them, clean up a little bit, and then I print digitally. Mm. And what format do you, you photograph? I use the medium format. Uh, it's a Bronica 645. Um, ideally, I would want to work with 6x7, but um, I tried the Mamiya camera. It was just too heavy for me to work with, and I was so used to working with my small Bronic camera, so I just stick with that format. And lastly, um, is the lighting, is all na natural light, or do you, uh, you add artificial light to it? Uh, I think in the beginning, I did use artificial lighting, just a little bit, but I think most of my photos are natural light. The more I photograph, I, I, f I found like um, I cannot do a better job than natural light, so I just give up. <laughs> and then just one last question. Um, how do you find using you know, your boyfriend as your subject? How does that uh, you know, affect your relationship and vice versa? Uh, I think it, it actually really helps the relationship. Because in the beginning, I was just photographing for myself, you know, for a class. And then I photographed him, and we just photographing. And then we really get used to it, and then it becomes part of a life. And I think. This is something that kind of keep us together because we have, instead of living together, just living together, we have something to do together. Um, so that kind of helps our relationship. But our relationship also kind of influences the project. You know, my relationship changes sometimes. I think he grows up so much. So I think our relationship is more balanced right now. So my photograph style, you know, what I was photographing has also changed. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Um, <clears throat> I happen to live, I lived in Japan for almost three years at one point, and I mm -hmm. know that they happen to be very conservative uh, with what they show and whatnot. And I also understand that in China they happen to be more conservative, conservative than here in the US. How are your images viewed there or by those audiences uh, compared to here? Mm. I find I haven't ever shown in Japan yet, but I've shown in China, and um, I I think um, when I show my photo in China, I was very concerned about what kind of value it is. Is it only for um, artistic audience, or it's for general public? If it's general public, I won't. I would never show this photograph. Um, I think. Um, U.S. is definitely more like the Western countries, the U.S., European. They're more open to you know any type of photograph. They've seen everything, so it's all okay. 
But in China, I think the general public are not used to contemporary art concepts. So these are just, I think, it's really against their beliefs. So I'd, I would rather just not showing them. I had a question regarding the balance of power mm -hmm. in your photographs. You're in control for the most part. Mm -hmm. Yet, however, your boyfriend is holding the button. Mm -hmm. The cable is. How, what's your thoughts on that? Why is that? Um, or how did that come to be? Um, in the beginning, um, you know, the cable release is really old school. It's long cable release, the air bulb. And um, I was just always having trouble to click the shutter without making my face look agony. So <laughs> in order to look good in the photograph, I hand him the cable release. But as a result, like one of the photo when I was pinching his nipples and he's clicking the shutter, and somehow I like that, you know? It's almost like I'm telling him to click the shutters and he's doing it and it's kind of like um, a way of how the relationship goes that you know he looks like he's in control but actually I'm in control but who knows who's <laughs> really in control <laughs> yeah. Thank, you. Thank you Does anybody else want to know something intimate? <laughs> I was just when I, I I notice your pictures and I look at you and a lot of your pictures you have that red fingernail polish. Mm -hmm. What does that signify? I don't know what that signifies because usually I don't wear <laughs> sorry I don't wear red fingernails. Um, but I do it for photograph. I think um, I just really like the color of red. You know I just unintentionally, like subconsciously, always having red in my photograph. Um, we didn't really get to hear about PIMO, and could you talk uh, briefly about that? Uh, okay, PIMO, PIMO is a, a name for Pixie and Mara, so it's a name for us because it's like we are a person and we say we are PIMO and um, we actually have a band together, so our band name is PIMO is Pixie and Mara. Um, so I think it's kind of like a name for the two people. And it, I mean, is that a sign that it's becoming more of an active collaboration? As you said, the relationship evolves and, and you guys evolve with it. And um, is, is that more of what we can expect in the future is uh, collaborative? Yeah, I think so. I, I think that this project is, I would say, maybe I have 75 to 80% or even a little bit more. Um, but I think he, he did contribute his ideas during the photo shoot. So it, I think it's a collaboration. And also we are doing a band together. So we are collaborating in music too. And I think, um, yeah, in the future, I think we're, we will, we will be thinking about doing some art projects that's really collaborative, like 50-50 kind of, yeah. I've got three more pick, uh, questions for you. <laughs> the, three easy ones, probably. The first one is, do you have a model release for your boyfriend? <laughs> Thank you for reminding me, because I been, keep trying to get it <laughs> for a long time, because I think I always have the fear, actually, <laughs> that one day if, you know, unfortunately, what, what will happen to this photograph? So. But it's kind of really hard to bring the topic <laughs> to him. I was always trying to find a like, good situation to ask for it. The second question I'm having is the publica or your publication in Matt Magazine. How mm -hmm. important, what, what is the relevance for you, you know, having it published there? Oh, what do you mean? The, you, you know, the Matt Magazine? Mm -hmm. uh, I um, was that important? You know, did it really help your career? Was it? Or was it just a byproduct on your way? Uh, I don't really know. 
because I, uh, I think a lot of things, I, I'm not sure whether they're important or not, but if you have a chance or opportunity to show your work, I think it's very important just to show them. So it all adds up. I don't know whether it's really helpful or whether, you know, they really make something happen, but I think it, it's like butterfly effect. And the last question is, where do you go from there, from here now? You know, what is sort of the new direction you go when you've finished the, those two projects that you've shown today? Uh, Mara said somebody's going to ask this question. <laughs> 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 um, this is the least favorite question I've got. But um, I don't know. I don't know. Oh, I was thinking about some collaborative work with him. Microwave and shut up. <laughs> <laughs> um, all of your work's been co collaborative with your boyfriend. Mm -hmm. um, is there any other person or anyone else subject matter that you've considered or would consider? Uh, in my last, uh, the, the newest project, actually I have other people in the photographs, but it just doesn't matter anymore who, who's in the photograph. Uh, I was thinking about photographing other people, but I think the relationship and how I photograph, the way I photograph, uh, I'm not sure it really fits me because I was trying and I haven't got a very successful um, result yet. So that's what I've been thinking about, but I haven't, I'm not sure. All right, well, uh, thank you so much, Pixie. Great Thank lecture. You. First time in life that I actually got to learn something that I'm in interested in. When I was in China, um, I was never allowed to study art because it was not considered a promising career. <laughs> so um, I had a, such a great chance to study art, and I just learn as much as I can. And I was also interested in film, so I was taking a lot of film classes. Um, as a result, I was um, looking at Memphis, and it was such a great location for photographers, because there's many films which uh, was taken in Memphis, because it's a great backdrop. <coughs> so I went to these places, and I see locations that are interested in, and I, I think, you know, I almost feel like it can be like a film set. So I find people that I know, and I ask them to act for me, and I'm going to take picture for that. So this, this is actually was my thesis project. It's called Steals from Unseen Films. And this one is taken in Shanghai. Um, there was also about U.S., so Elvis, about like, very few things are known about us, and I always like music and like musicians. So I think if I go to his city, maybe I can meet some musicians. So I decided to go to University of Memphis for my um, grad school. Um, when I just got to Memphis, uh, it was quite a culture shock for me because um, the landscape is so different. I grew up in Shanghai, and it's like a, a city of concrete um, buildings. There's no plants in, and there's no open view, like big skies like that. So I was, in the first, I was just exploring Memphis, um, to see what interests me. Um, I think it was more like my first impression of the United States. And, you know, the people are different, language is different, um, the culture and the, even the religion is different. So I was just, just experiencing. I, I didn't know what to shoot. I just, uh, just shoot whatever interests me. And then um, also, um, it was my. F there was a, a building in Shanghai, and during the Cultural Revolution, uh, many people actually committed suicide in Shanghai from this building because it's kind of high building at the time, and it has a nickname called Shanghai Di uh, Shanghai Diving Platform. So. I just sneak into the building with some of my friends and then took some picture. 
And I really like doing this project. I mean, I like, I like the moment when I'm taking the photos, and I like seeing the photos. But one thing about these photos, I feel like when I look at them, I don't see much of me in it. I, I feel like I want to take some photo that more, something that can belongs to me, like only me. And um, I met one person, very special person in Memphis. That was the luckiest thing happened to me. Um, I met my boyfriend. Um, he later became my muse. And um, he is Japanese, and he's, he is five years younger than me. And um, I first met All right, um, hello and welcome to Digital Photography's i3 lecture series. Um, as Katrin mentioned, it's our last lecture in the spring, and we are so lucky to have Pixie Liao uh, to help us close out the series. Um, she's originally from Shanghai, China, and she's currently based in Brooklyn, New York. She holds an MFA in photography from the University of Memphis. Recent awards include New York Foundation for the Arts Fellowship, and Focal New Works Award and Lens Culture Exposure Award. Uh, Pixie has been an artist in residence in Lightwork, the Lower Manhattan Cultural Council, Center for Photography at Woodstock, and the Camera Club of New York. Exhibitions include Arario Gallery, Flowers Gallery, Kunstlich Gallery, Xiangning, I hope that pronunciation is okay, Xiangning Art Museum, VT Art Salon, Kipps Gallery, the Running Horse Contemporary Art Space, and Northern Lit Photo Festival. A word to our students, uh, Pixie is a rising star in photography, and there's a thing or two that we can all learn uh, from how she's built such a brilliant career so quickly. So please help me welcome Pixie Liao to our lecture series. Um, hello, everyone. Um, thank you so much for coming. Um, I may already introduce my name is Pixie. Um, I'm originally from Shanghai, China, and I currently live in Brooklyn. Um, first, I want to thank you um, to the SVA, MPS, Digital Photography, and also Jaime for inviting me here, because it's a great honor to me personally. Um, I remember 10 years ago when I was uh, looking for school um, in the US, um, SV was one of my favorite, but at that time uh, it was after 9-11, so I decided to go to school in the middle of the U.S. Um, so I, I went to Memphis, um, basically because of this guy. Not because I'm a great fan of Elvis, but because at that time I, I, was, uh, I didn't know much about